Welcome back, everybody, to the Bench Sheet Podcast. Today is a, a special day. I'm George Niang. This is my co-host, Kevin Spees. I always wonder if you're going to say grill guy or Kevin Spees. You say it different times. Yeah, well, I mix it up. But okay. today's a big day for us. We have our first guest on the Bench Sheet Podcast, a great friend of mine, Tyrese Halliburton. You know, we were... Yeah, we should clap it up for clap. Tyrese. Thank you for being the first guest. Yeah, I mean... We appreciate it. Pressure. Pressure on us. And... Right and the show, I feel yeah, like yeah. This you have to make this good, so no pressure. <laughs> make our show good, please, dude. No, uh, but <laughs> wait, I, before we get into your intro, I do want to. Okay. I know you're a wrestling guy. I always come bearing gifts, I'm so I got to give you a little something. I don't know if you like this guy or not, but Big John Cena. Big John Cena guy, I am. Okay, yeah, so yeah. this is yours, dude. You can't see me here. I appreciate you that. You can yeah. throw it away. It's yeah, it's no, a it, Urban Outfitter shirt. But I, I almost have every Cena tea ever. He's a big vintage tea guy. So oh, okay. This will go right in with the vintage tea. There you go, dude. Well, it's not really vintage, but it's not vintage. Just we'll, vintage. We'll talk about it later. But you know, my guy has helped me with my fashion. You know, we're gonna get into that, dude. Yeah, because you are a fashion icon. Some would say. Wow. Um, our boy, again, as I said to you, loves purple shoes. I feel like we gotta. I, we like gotta, that. <laughs> I only have two pairs of shoes like at all. That's all I have. So I can't really talk shit on your shoe game, yeah. but um, maybe we can help him out a little later. Yeah. With that being said, <laughs> um, you know, Tyrese, our first guest here from uh, the Indiana Pacers who are having a, a tremendous year, as I would say, what is this? This is going to be the first year in how long making it to the playoffs. I don't think they've made the playoffs since uh, the bubble. Is that, I think the bubble is right. So it's just about, Four, four years, years? Yeah. yeah you were in the bubble weren't you i was i was that was the year where we actually like became close oh, wait uh, were you still in school during 20 i was going to the draft so i declared okay. for the draft bef like at, when the world shut down wait so your 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 last year of college got cut short i mean i broke my wrist in january and oh, we were okay. actually one of the last games we lost oh, so shit. i would love to lie to you and say we would have made the tournament <laughs> Already eliminated. You're about to win the tournament. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude. Uh, I just remember there's a guy on Instagram, Dante Friga. I don't know if you've seen him. He, he's like a big like YouTube pooper, and he started making content his senior years at like a Division three school, and they were like in the Final Four of the like to to win a national championship, and the world just shut down. Yeah, that's like, sickening. Dude, I couldn't imagine like being a senior, and then you like you just went home, like you didn't like have college the rest of. The re I don't know, it just sounds like a crazy experience. Yeah, so. to, the crazy part is I don't think what people understand is like your whole draft process was like expanded over like six months rather than like three months. And oh, that, yeah, because it was delayed. That's right? almost like how, you know, we became close. It's like obviously I come back to Iowa State and do like basketball camps. Like, yeah, it's all cool. And he was coming out and – this is probably the la only or last time he's ever asked me for advice. Like, yo, during the draft process, and I like wanted to be like real helpful, but I wanted to be like, hey, bro, like you're a lottery pick. I'm the, I was the 50th pick. And he's like yeah. soaking it up like a sponge. What and I'm I like, do? I'm like, I'm trying to help you out here, but like you're kind of gonna have to navigate this on your own. Yeah. But like, speak to that, like what that was like for like six months of preparing for not knowing when the draft was, if it was going to be in person and where you thought you were going to go. Because if we redid the draft now, I mean, yeah, you man. were supposed to be a top five pick. I'm sure if we redid it now, you'd one, two or three, whichever yeah. one your humble self wants to <laughs> choose yourself as. Um, yeah. I mean, at, at first, you know, I was rehabbing my wrist, so trying to figure that out, but I mean, really it was, I, I enjoyed it. Like, I guess I didn't know any different, so it didn't yeah. really matter to me, but like, we just worked out every day, like for, I mean, the world shut down in March. I got drafted in November. So essentially six months of just That's working crazy. out five days a week. Were you just like in a bubble? Were you like so we did. So CAA, the agency I'm with, they usually yeah. do their pre-draft process in LA. So right now, like kids are starting to sign, like right now, where we are right now, it's March. Like kids are starting, or April, kids are starting to sign with agencies. Yeah. Kids would then go to LA for the next like two months. And then they would get drafted in June where I signed with CAA and LA was obviously shut down, yeah. but Vegas wasn't. So no uh, rules in Vegas. Yeah. Nobody was there. So it was like <laughs> yeah. me. Go oh, casinos were shut down too. Huh? No, no, not really. Not, not really yeah. by the time. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't 21, so I couldn't, yeah. not you like I could no, you enjoy have no it. money then. <laughs> yeah. NIL wasn't hitting man. No, but it was like me, Josh Green, Devon Dodson, Ashton Haggins. It was a, it was like, five or six of us in Vegas. And they and put just, you up in like a, a They put apartment. us in an apartment complex. It yeah. was brand new. Like actually 
the first building we I was the me and my agent Dave were the first two people to ever live in this no shit. apartment complex. Like they were doing construction the whole time we were there. I was waking up to construction every day. Damn. But like we were waking up, going to gym, do like our two workouts a day, uh five days a week for yeah. you know, I mean, I would say I moved out there and I spent like the first like month or two in Wisconsin, but I was out there for like three months just working out in Vegas. So once the season ended, uh, like you just left your class, like you were like, all right, I'm not going to go to school yeah, anymore. Like, like, you what, didn't what know did this guy's a college dropout. Well, I'm a college dropout. Uh, you're pretty successful. So I think you made the right choice, but yeah. what was that like? Like, did you have to play the game? I don't even know if you can speak to it or not, but did you have to play the game? Like tell your professors you're leaving or like, well, what, like, what you was know, that was, like, nobody could go to school. So we were all doing school online anyway, oh, okay. which is like, if I was going to in a normal year, I'm assuming that obviously I would have went to LA and did my pre-draft yeah. there and I would have had to do most of school online anyway. Yeah. So, Oh, you would have finished out the semester. Yeah. Yeah. I would have finished the semester because oh, okay, you got to leave. Yeah. And if you finish out the semester in like good standing, that's the only way they honor your scholarship moving forward. So like if, oh. if you just drop out of school, They'll your scholarship's never, yeah. not honored anymore. You'd have to pay oh, to go back. They're like, yeah. F you. They're like, yeah, F you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You're not yeah. coming back with this <laughs> education then, dumbass. Okay. So you finished that. You tell them I didn't need it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I told my mom I'd go back. We're up yeah. one day. We're up in the air about yeah. that right now. But, but when what, you think about that, that's a real dilemma though. Because yeah. at the end of the day, like what is the... I'm not saying this, so don't take me, you know. We're about to steer words, all the kids in the wrong direction. But you should go to school. But if you have an opportunity to make hundreds of millions of dollars. Staring you down. Yeah, like having to waste, not waste your time, but, you know. It could feel go like Go back that. and get a degree. Yes, I understand. It It feels like you accomplished something, but is it really worth your time? But yeah. I'm not going to go against Brenda, so you should well, probably Well, what we go. talk about is like, you go to school. Why does everybody go to school? So you yeah. can get a degree, get a nice job, and yeah. make, money. make money. If you got the money. But like, I, I mean, I guess You're I skipped the degree. That. Part, yeah. but the only reason I would go back to school would be to spite my older brother. He's the only one in our family who has a college degree, and I feel like I'm smarter than him. So <laughs> that's the only way I would go back to school. So, yeah, Tanner. yeah. Tanner. Did you, uh, <laughs> Tanner? We're at your next grade. Like, like I, I wonder if both of you guys could speak to this. When you guys are going to college, like obviously basketball is a big reason, maybe the biggest reason why you're going to college at that point. Yeah. Do you how how much do you put into like? choosing a major did you even really think about it you're like eh, if i if for whatever reason basketball doesn't work out i'll do this like, i mean what? did you even get a chance to like even pick yeah your because major? I was you just were... getting into the professional school or the was it the school of business like Pro i was professional just, yeah. what's, what's, like, college of business no but like you're just getting in like your junior year you go into like all my classes would be in there what's it called oh, gen Jardine. ed Jardine. Yeah, but like the professional of program, is it? Is there something that's I don't know what it's called. Dude, I don't know. We're but, both good. We're set off. I got my degree. You got <laughs> your like money. Early, you guys you know hustled talk backwards. Coach. I hustled backwards. But I'm yeah. like an early junior, right? Because yeah. yeah. I had a little bit, some credits going into school. But yeah. uh, I knew I just wanted to do something in the business world if basketball yeah. wouldn't work out for me. So I guess that's kind of just like a broad spectrum, which made it easy to pick a school because every school has a business school. Yeah. So that was easy for me. Speaking, it, go ahead. No. Well, uh, uh, speaking of um, like making that decision process, you you grew up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. There's one question I want to ask you. Who's going to jump it? Mm. Uh, what's the best place to get pizza, and why is it Rocky Rococo's? Rocky Rococo's is it's fire. Hitting like that, it's, it's fire. fire. They're I've actually never heard catering of this place. my camp in Oshkosh. They're no catering. way. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. That yeah. is dope. See, you tried to... I, Rocky I that Rococo's. Yeah. I've never had your pizza, but you know. The breadsticks, fire. Smack. Rocky Rococo's, OD. Um, and it's a good place. It's like old school Pizza Hut where you can go there and, and you eat the pizza there. It's like fast food pizza kind of. <laughs> yeah, but I think people in Oshkosh might take this offensive <sighs> if I only... So now I got to say other okay, pizza so spots. We yeah. got like Zeroni's, uh, okay. Polito's, uh, what's this? Players Pizza. Uh, Those I'd are like, like four players, spots yeah. in Oshkosh. But Rocky like, Rococo is yeah. number one. But that's kind of like a chain, right? <laughs> Rocky Rococo is like... It's, there's it's a, a chain, few, yeah, yeah. It's not like yeah. a local Oshkosh spot. Yeah. It's like... There's a few in Basically Wisconsin. Basically Wisconsin, but I yeah. think there's a couple on the outskirts of the state. And you also went to, we were talking before we started recording, you went to like a small high school, did you, and a public school. So we're public school guys. This is like, uh, he's he went to Crenbrook. Sorry, That's a private guys, school. I was privileged. Yeah. I know something <laughs> about you. Um, did you get, were there prep schools that were like trying to pluck you? And why did you end up staying where you were? No well, way, this guy was a two-star. Wait, time on, time on. That was crazy. So, First of all, in well, Wisconsin, we don't 
I try to explain I explain to people all the time. Like yeah. we're not like other states. Like kind of. I mean, I don't want to say if you go to private school, you're weird in Wisconsin. But yeah. everybody, for the most part, goes to goes public to the public school. school. Like that's very normal. And there's not prep schools in Wisconsin. Oh, really? So like okay. there's prep schools outside of Wisconsin, but for the most part, you you know you know where you're going to high school when you're a kid outside of like the Milwaukee area. Yeah. I would say you know where you're going to high school when you're little. Like I knew I was going Dosh Gosh North from being a little kid. And there was, it just wasn't going to change. Like. Growing up, the same kids from fourth grade until senior in high school, I played the same kids. So, and it's funny you say it's like a small school because in Wisconsin, I don't know what you guys do, classes or divisions? Yeah, like class A. Yeah, class yeah like a. we do divisions. So, like division one is like the biggest. Yeah, like how many kids is that? Like we were the smallest division one school in my senior year. You were division, so you were in the biggest division at yeah, 1,100 1, kids. kids. And then the year kids? I left, they went back, they went to division two, and then the attendance has gone back up. So, like, so now they're back to division one. Dude, I went to a high school with 4,600 kids. Yeah, no, we 1,200 and we were division one. It's just how That's Wisconsin crazy. works. Yeah. yeah, prep schools is like a big thing on like the East Coast, East Coast or like yeah. New England. Yeah. But yeah, I don't In the see, Midwest, it's really no, now. Like I would yeah. say most kids, if they go to prep school, they would end up traveling somewhere yeah, like I'm, IMG I'm from the Burbs Chicago and it's similar there's a couple prep schools but there's not like in in New Jersey every person that's going to be a division one athlete that you you can tell by like freshman year if they have a shot that every public school comes in and like tries to pluck the kids so like we had a kid at our at the high school that I went to in New Jersey for a year who ended up playing he was like a big time football recruit and he he stayed at public school and it was like a big it was a big deal like yeah, oh yeah. my god he actually stayed so it doesn't sound like you you were no like it's not in, a not a thing in Wisconsin yeah. it's like kind of like private like I said private school is kind of like You're for weird, weird. Uh -huh. well yeah, I weirdo. guess that'd make me a weirdo but speaking <laughs> of Wisconsin high school basketball and then we can finally move on you guys have had some serious high level pros and or guys that have made a ton of I mean you Tyler Hero. Oh, you're saying from Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. can you you can list them off. Give Tristan Jass. Well, I mean, you got me, Tyler, Jordan Poole, uh, Kavon Looney's won a lot of championships. Yeah. Damn, Nick yeah. Van Exel's from there. Devin Harris had a long career. Yep. Um, I think we just all of us, like, especially me, Tyler, and Jordan, we're all like around the same age. We just yeah. we didn't have like representation from our area in the NBA. You know, yeah. so we think it's cool now that we're obviously able to do this, but kids see this as like a tangible thing back home because they yeah. see me, Tyler, Jordan. We all go back and do a lot of stuff back home. So I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. I think we all like to represent the state. Well, moving on from high school basketball, because you can only talk about high school basketball. I love for high so school long. sports. This guy loves high school Okay, sports. I was a high school basketball coach. So exactly. of course I love high he school. He just needs to chill. But <laughs> moving on to the so, NBA, you know. I love high school basketball. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Um, obviously, I play for the Cavaliers and, you know, Tyrese plays for the Pacers. And before this season actually started, yeah. you know, Tyrese had never beat me. Is that true? Yeah, he had never beat me. So Sorry. what's that? What, like, is he a little bit of your, because you're kind of his OG kind of, as no, I would say, we're right? Just, we're just homie. We're, that's, my, that's my brother. I don't know, dude. You're kind of like, you're his, almost his vet and like another team's vet kind of, right? <laughs> and so, <laughs> what, no, you can't, what's wrong with you that? You can't like put labels on stuff. That's just, you know. One He's of my, my one of my, my best bro. friends. That's that's my bro. I don't want to do like the whole. Oh, that's your. You know what I mean. We I just, think we could put labels what's under on. what's understood <laughs> doesn't need to be spoke about. But anyway, okay. moving on. Before but, Kevin but what gets was that? What, like, do you guys do you guys talk shit about that? So like, that was me. I, that was the only thing I had. Like, yeah. you know what I mean. To like hold on to to like talk shit. Like, yeah. Like you'll never beat me. That and it would kill him. He'd be like tight. He'd be like, I gotta beat him. So then you know. He has a someone that he's that works on staff with him that we're all you know real close with, and after they beat me in preseason, they yeah. were like, "It's ah, we beat you." I'm like, "That doesn't, doesn't count, count as preseason." Then we played him like three games in, and we had some injuries, and they beat us again. And he was like, "God damn, Tyrese, <laughs> who's two and zero against this guy?" <laughs> and like, ah. Do you get pissed I was, about that? I was so mad because <laughs> I was struggling starting off yeah. the year. And then I had to listen to this guy be like, the only thing like I could hang over his head yeah. was like the fact that I was undefeated against him. And, you know. Is it like when you guys play, like, do you guys get serious? Like, you, like obviously you're friends on and off the court, oh. but like, how serious do you get? Like, there's, when you're on, like, do you guys some, chirp? Some like, heated ones where yeah. he's like, you know, this is like the ultimate disrespect when you do in the NBA. And, <laughs> he's, and he's I, like like laughing. Laughing. I don't know and, what it is. I'm and excited he to does it just to like, he knows that it'll piss me off as he'll bring it up. And you know, he's a point guard. So he's just looking around and then he'll be Your like, matchup? He'll be like, and then point at me. Like, like his guy, like bring him up here to put him in the ball. 
And I'll be running up there. I'll be like, this ain't what you fucking want. <laughs> And he tries to like, he's bring your ass here, boy. <laughs> so then I try to like get up and like follow him, and he's like doing this. And there was one time we were playing. I was in Philly, and we were playing. He was in yeah. Sacramento, and I was right in front of our bench. And he somehow got the ball from like the the top of the key, and we made our way down to like the corner. Right and he hits like this tough ass, like falling away step back in my face. Dude. Turns around to the bench, and then turns around and looked at me like. Like, oh. <laughs> take like, that. If we weren't in like a public setting, I would have like, jeez. <laughs> like, get over it. <laughs> it's got to be worse because it's like, you know, I can only, obviously I can only relate to like playing pickup basketball, but like when I play pickup with my friends, we fucking get angry. So yeah. I can imagine it's only tenfold when you're playing in front of a million fucking people on the TV and 80,000. Yeah, but go. I'm the one that gets angry. This is the guy that's like <laughs> running around like, fucking, oh, and you just laugh and like shit. he never gets you pissed off. Well, no, I, I, got, I think I got switched on to him last game and he hit me with a nice little spin off in the post. Cause yeah. like when I guard in the post, like I gotta, I gotta prepare. Yeah. Cause yeah. like. Dudes are, dudes are, dudes are usually there, trying you know, to big body. Dudes are, yeah, that's yeah. their time to really get physical. And I leaned, and as soon as I leaned, you know, he used to be like a real post presence back in the day. <laughs> so he knows back in the day. He knows post offense. So he spun yeah. off me quick, and I like kind of fell forward. And I could hear Tristan and Luke Walton behind me, and I was like, I'm not looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever saw that. Oh never, my never god! Hey, every trash gets a stake. No, but moving on. I mean, this is a topic that we have talked yeah. about. You're obviously have been a two time all star. This year it was in all-star starter. Yeah. Also in Indianapolis. Wow. Tough. There we go. That's um, gotta been cool. That experience probably was yeah, really it was cool. cool. Huh? It was really, it, it was really cool. Yeah. It, was, it was a lot of fun. We've been talking about it. What now that, you know, you are an all-star and you've done it twice. What are the things that you need to see go into the game for it to somewhat improve? I mean, the way I've thought about it is they usually, the last game is either Wednesday or Thursday and then you travel to the city and go wherever. I was thinking you kind of just knock it out as soon as you play like your last game, fly into the city that the All-Star game is, and then give the guys the weekend and into the week. But I've never played an All-Star game besides like a high school one in New, <laughs> New Jersey or New Hampshire. <laughs> but you, uh, you've got to experience it. I mean, what do you think is the next thing? Because at this point, I mean, we talk about pickup games in the summer at like UCLA or like – Rico runs, you know, and those are like high level, but nobody gets to see that on national television. Like, yeah, w what do you think would would need to change? Yeah, I think there's some interesting. Uh, there's been some interesting ideas I've seen online, and you know, I think obviously some leagues have kind of punted. They just punted, and they're like, it's not going to happen, you know. And I would hate to see that happen in our league, but um, I do think that you know part of it is just on us as young guys to just take it serious, like. Obviously, like guys like Braun and other dudes like KD, Steph, they've played in so many All Star games already. I think yeah. that it just is on us as the younger dudes to be like, we're gonna be for real, like take yeah. it for real, like go at each other, and then that kind of just amplify the game. I think um, location could be important too. Like obviously, yeah. location. What what locations do we speak of? <laughs> well, Miami, Vegas, well, like we're in Indy. We were in Indy this year. Love Indy. Don't ever. Yeah, I mean, plan that's on home. Leaving. Come on, yeah, but. Um, what Warm I will weather. say is like dudes usually we were in and the year before that it was in Utah yeah and the year before that it was here so yeah. those are three three places that guys don't want to spend their you know vacation yeah on you know what I mean so like Lake usually, Erie is really nice in, Korea, <laughs> Just you know, in the winter it's a little cold <laughs> usually people are like like as soon as the game's done Guys are gone. Like, yeah, they're I out. have a like, funny story from like my first All Star game. You know, I'm just excited to be there, <laughs> and I'm like, All "Where's right, everybody I'm, going?" Like it's Sunday, and I'm like, "Yeah, we're we going to I'm dinner." Like, yeah, like it's Sunday All Star. Like just All Stars gonna be here. Like it's gonna be fun. Like we're having a fun night. They're like everybody when I get in the locker. I'm like, "Yeah, our our plane leaves as soon as the game's done." And I'm like, oh, "What?" Shit. Like I didn't book anything. Because how many I'm days here now? How many days? Because you get Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, right? Well, you come back Wednesday. Yeah, I mean we you, you get go, there Friday, you get there. Right? Thursday or Friday, depending yeah. on your schedule, and then the game's on Sunday, and then practice is usually on Tuesday. This year, practice on Tuesday, we played on Thursday. Oh, shit, yeah, so, so like, you're back you're, quick. You're usually, and you yeah. don't have to practice that first practice, Yeah. Um, but where was I going with that? Oh, like, I just think that location, like, if there's somebody there, say, for somewhere where people actually, like, maybe want to be, yeah. I think that could be important, too, and, like, not not even, like, Miami or Vegas. Like, those are obviously nice spots, but, it, I mean, I don't. I'm not the logistics guy, yeah, but like but, Hawaii or the Bahamas or something like that. Maybe other dudes would want to 
like just maybe guys who are ready to get out of there and go on their vacation. Oh, the story I was going to tell. Yes, hit me. Was that after that year where Sunday I, you know, I was excited to be there after yeah. the game. I this is in Salt done. Lake. He's yeah. like my first year, guys. I'm like a first year. We did the little, the little championship presentation. Mm -hmm. and it was like that's cool, like nice. And then like, all right, you guys gotta go do media now. Like, and usually it's like certain guys go do media, certain guys go shower, and then you switch. Okay. Right. So I was in the media part. So I go and do my. My little media session. It wasn't long at all. It was yeah. mainly just, uh, you know, indie media. Yeah. Got done. As I'm walking back, Luca and Jokic are walking out fully with their suits on. They're ready. They're done. I'm like, bro, I was, I was in media for five minutes. Like, yeah. how are you guys dressed? Up? They're like, I'll see you, Brate. See you they're later, Brate. I'm like, what? And I get to the locker room. Bron's gone. He's already gone. Like, the locker room's emptied out. Basically. Yeah, like his his locker room's he's gone. I'm like, what? Where's everyone going? I'm like, is it, are we gonna have, like, like, but Brian, you didn't want to talk about the pick and roll coverage yeah. that we were. Like, we, I thought we were gonna like have a have a good time, have a like, moment, hang gone. out. Everybody was yeah. gone. Everybody Damn. left. So it was just. I think me and uh, Ant might have been the only two who stayed. We were both first year all stars. First year all stars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then this year in Indy, the only person I know who stayed, Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. First year all star. First year all star. Yeah. Reach <laughs> got. <laughs> Tyrese Maxey, Philadelphia legend. Yeah, I feel like warm weather would help. I, I said this off off air, but I think it would be really fun to to watch some sort of uh, legends game because you know I think that the this year it just this is obviously as a fan. I don't I'm obviously on the outside looking in. It seems like aside from the um, shootout, which was like so fun, and I, I think with like some of these WNBA stars, it's going to be even better next yeah. next year. It just lacked a little like competitiveness, yeah. and so uh, you can't really expect that out of the guys that are all-stars because it's like you guys have 82 games and it's like you don't get that much time off it would be cool to see like a three-on-three -three tournament of like um of like legends we've well, talked about a one-on-one -on -one tournament too which would be interesting yeah. i mean yeah. i want no smoke with that but yeah, uh, me, me neither. <laughs> yeah but I, I think that you could find i you think you'd think find so? five or six no. dudes that would like yeah. really get after it and like dudes you would want to you would want to watch see, yeah. or all the guys that you know, talk shit on podcasts, like make them legends. Yeah. Like <laughs> get them on there like and cook them. No, I wouldn't say cook them because they, they still will be able to cook. Like yeah. if, if you brought like Gilbert Arenas, Paul Pierce, yeah. or even like Paul Pierce and Draymond Green play against each other. That would be fun. I would watch <laughs> that. That'd be prime time saying. entertainment. Like, no disrespect yeah. to any of those dudes. Like, people would really watch yes. that. They have a podcaster game. Uh, you be in it now? No. <laughs> Come on. Because one on one isn't my thing. No, no, I'm not a, a one on one guy. podcaster game. Yeah. Five on five, half uh, court. I don't know if I'd make that cut, but we can. <laughs> Would you vote me in? I'd put you in. I'd put oh, in. my yeah. God. No, but back to the Indiana Pacers. Um, like we talked about earlier, going to make the playoffs this year. Yeah. And obviously, you signed a pretty lucrative <laughs> contract this summer, which is a funny story because Tyrese had his people set up, you know, something nice. We lived together in the summer. Okay. Bro Bros. Bros. Yeah. Oh, now you got to smell it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> inside joke, inside joke. Sorry, I took and, it too far. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so, like, obviously, like the number was like two sixty yeah. that came out from Woj, and then was this after you signed your deal? Like, were, so did you? I think I don't know whose was mine was first. Yours was his was first. Second. That Cause, sucks. Because I, because I, what, what do you mean? Because you're like, oh, dude, dude, I just signed X, and then no, he's no, like, no, I didn't suck. No, for everybody's happy for everybody. Yeah, no, we were good. We we had a night too. Don't say nothing. <laughs> uh, we had a night. Yes, we did. Hell of a night. Yeah. But so. <laughs> <laughs> like he had his people set up. It was like balloons and it said like 260 in front of it. Dope. And Woj had come out and said like mine was like 26 million, even though it might have been a little So you just took up. a. So someone was like, hey, George, like, why don't you fold the zero behind the six and then you stand next and take a picture next to 26. I thought that was pretty funny. And that, that is you will just like as again, as a fan, like it's got it. That's got to be the moment. Right. Because it's like obviously when you get drafted is so cool because it's a dream realized. But then you put in and even you, someone who like you've clawed your way yeah, from into fight. Yeah. Throwing like throwing hooks, yeah. uppercuts. I, I remember you were telling me a story over the summer right after you signed your deal where you were like you were talking to your agent and you're like, bro, I fucking was playing for 50 K like three years ago. Yeah. Fucking get the deal done. Yeah, I was like, don't be... put, don't tell them we'll take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't fuck this. Up. <laughs> It's it's got to be cool. Like, that's wait, are you sure that's the right number? Uh, you swear? Tell, him, tell, All right, him, tell him we'll take it. You sign for me. Tell him we'll, we'll even take a little less. <laughs> yeah. They're paying that much. Um, it's got to be cool to uh, get that. It's, li it's life changing, like and generational 
life changing, right? So that's got to be such a good fucking feeling to be like, yeah, I fucking did it. Yeah, you know. And I think we were both excited to see each other do it too. Yeah, like we spent this is our second summer living together. Yeah, and uh, we both knew we were both over contract. You know, yeah. so um, the fact that it wasn't just like everybody was celebrating me or everybody was celebrating him. It was like, we were celebrating each other. And yeah. I thought that was, oh yeah. Was we cool. were, we were celebrating out in LA. You guys we were, in were to sell Tyrese was so happy. He was celebrating. We went to the club and, and he forgot his wallet. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> he, he forgot his wallet. We're in there. And I mean, like, Wait, yeah, you just when, didn't when, bring your wallet like, or like, cause what? it was like right up the street where we were staying and we're all like happy. Like, my contract comes out. I'm at the house, like popping a bottle of Ace yeah. of Spades, and <laughs> Tyrese. You know, we're like, all right, we're going out to dinner, da da da. And then it's like, okay, we're going to the club. They got everything set up. Like there's like money guns, like money big guns, fat heads, things and things of money. And then they're like, excuse it. me, uh, Mr. Halliburton, these two are your sections. Like right at the DJ booth, we're gonna need to get your uh, ID and credit card. And Tyrese is like, he's in front of me, and I see him go like, no. And he was like. Oh damn! I forgot my wallet. He was like, "Looks like this one's on you." <laughs> no, you did them dirty. <laughs> oh wow! So you covered it? Yeah, it was it was well worth it. How it does that happen? That, you can't Venmo for a night like that. So no. like, what? How did you just? I mean, we're gonna later? be friends forever. Yeah. So you didn't we'll, give a we'll, shit. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get it back. But that was a heck of a night. Um, Travis Kelsey even made an appearance. Dope. And I accidentally yeah. posted on my story. Didn't know until the morning that oh. I posted that we were out. Did you accidentally snitch? No, 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 he okay. didn't. But people, they were like, "Oh, Halliburton and Niang." Like, really I woke it. up to Bleacher Report saying, "Like Halliburton, Niang, and Kelsey had a night." Oh, and dope. I was like, "How do they know that? Like, <laughs> who, 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 who you put, put, it on you the put that out? The private and story I, and I, on Instagram. Like, close friends. And I looked, and it was like, like "Damn, that my real story." Yeah, it was like, Oops. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there any like? Is there any little bit of vindication? Because it's like this. I, we were talking about this. The three best point guards in the league obviously as a fan outside looking in you sga i think jalen brunson you guys all are on new Knicks guy i'm a Knicks guy obviously um we also went to the same high school so i've been like following jalen brunson it's cool to see his yeah. his career from afar you guys are all on new teams and are on have gotten great contracts on new teams is there a little bit of vindication there too i mean I, you probably don't hold grudges against the team that drafted you but is there a little bit of like yeah, well, like, well, I, you know, I think they they had a lot of success last year, and they're yeah. having success again. And I think every it worked out for everybody. Like, I yeah. think uh, you ask anybody who the top three point guards in the league, I think you'd get a different answer if you sure. asked five hundred people. Sure, like everybody would give you a different answer. So, uh, I just think everybody it worked out for everybody, and like God doesn't make mistakes. I think yeah. in the moment we can all be frustrated and feel how we want to feel, but uh, you know, I'm so happy that this has happened for me and my family, and everybody's good. God, what a great answer. I mean, I don't think I'd well, be that mature. Well, the, the, story, the story is like crazy because when all of it was coming out was when like Ben Simmons was like yeah. in turmoil with like the Sixers yeah. and stuff like that. And me and him were going back and forth and he calls me and like I had to come back from shoot around. He's like, yo, like, am I getting traded to you guys? And I was like, no, oh, I mean, like, I don't think so. Like, I haven't yeah. heard anything like that. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. My, my, my agent's calling me and he, then he like, I'm like, are you good? And he like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna call you right back. And he calls me. He's like, bro, I just got traded to Indy, and that was kind of uh, like, yeah. you know, my situation. Like, I, I've never been traded because people actually have to want you. You know what I mean? <laughs> so at that point, it, <laughs> so at that point, you know, what I mean, I was like, that's stuff that I really don't have to worry about. It's like, hey, good for you, yeah. pal. That's like, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know. But with him, I was like, damn, like this thing happens fast, and yeah. I'm like. Well, like, bro, I thought we were supposed to hang out over All Star break. He was like, man, I got to go back to Sacramento, get my stuff from India, and it like all happened so quick. And then, yeah. you know, to get back to what we were talking about, obviously, you signed that lucrative, you know, contract. And then, like, just talk about obviously, there's pressure, but like, people will never understand like what someone has to go through when you have that price tag next to your name. And people are like, you are a franchise guy. And then being a kid that was from Oshkosh that people overlooked. How does that all circle into one where you're able to handle yourself and handle success and then still want more, not only for yourself, but for your team? Because at the end of the day, like the Indiana Pacers, you know, are expecting you to take their franchise to new heights. Yeah, I think that it uh, it's interesting. Like, I think it's obviously no matter what I answer this right now, if people are going to be, be like, 
shut up. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that yeah. is what they'll they'll never, they They'll never understand. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's obviously a first world, very, very first world problem. Yeah, we but. understand we're privileged. All right? <laughs> yes. but like we do have issues and emotional yeah. stuff going on too. Uh, yeah. But I think that it's like, you get the deal and I think everybody can be excited for you. But I think that, I think once you sign a contract, any contract, you're, you have to like reprove it. Yeah. Like you have to prove that you were worth that. Yeah. Not only to, um, you know, the people who signed you the deal, the GM and the organization and the fans, but. You talking about the Twitter GMs too? <laughs> yeah. Twitter GMs too. <laughs> Maybe kill them. Yeah. And then I think to yourself at the same time though, yeah. like proving that every day and uh, understanding that you're human, you can have good days, bad days. But um, I think obviously like, you know, in a, from a global view, like I'm gonna look back on this and it's like, wow, that changed my life. What an unbelievable thing from where I'm from. But I think like in the moment right now, it's kind of like, you know, it was kind of written for me. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I kind of going into the summer had an idea. I could sign a pretty big deal, whatever that number was. And now it's like, I want to like every day I'm trying to like prove, prove that right to not only the GM and our, our organization, but myself, like this is, this is earned, not yeah. like I earn this every day and I'm going to continue to earn it every day by the impact I have on this organization. And I think that's, that's how basketball works. Like most guys, like obviously we all play, we all want to make a ton of money, make sure our families are good. But yeah. I think like once you get money, like, you know, I'm about to make, it's more now like the full focus is like nothing but winning. So yeah. like I'm at the point now where I maybe last year, if like I, I had a bad game, and we won, like I was like, damn, like I had a bad game, you know yeah. what I mean? But now I'm really like, I just want to win. Like I don't think yeah. it doesn't matter how you judge me as a basketball player. Yeah. Truthfully, like it, I want like gauge who I am as a basketball player about how I impact winning. So I think yeah. that's where I'm getting to, where it's a it's a new view that I think it takes time for young players to get to because everybody want to make sure the family good and the family eats yeah. and that's of course and that's how we're supposed to be. We're all wired yeah. that way. But I do think you get to a point where it's like. Winning is the only thing that matters right now. And that's, I think that's where I'm at. It seems like when you're, uh, this is an assumption, but when you are someone that's like intrinsically motivated your whole life, you're not mo necessarily, mo like, of course you want to get a scholarship, of course, but you're not necessarily, like you get up and go to work every day because that's what you want to do, right? You want to be the best version of yourself. So when you have that habit, and the money comes, it's like your motivation doesn't change because you weren't necessarily purely motivated by the money. You were motivated by trying to be the best version of yourself. Is that true? Like, do you feel yeah, like that? I, I think like uh, when I, had some, I was going through some struggles, I think like after All-Star break, I like wasn't shooting it well. And it's funny, O'Shea Brissett sent me this like little excerpt of a book he's reading right now. And it was like the line, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was basically like, you've never doubted yourself to get here. So why would you start now? You know, and yeah. I was like, and that kind of like sat with me where I was like, that's a fact, like yeah. getting to where I've got to. And I think anybody getting to where they've got to in this league, like you had, you, you, sometimes you're the only person that believes in your dream because yeah. for a lot of us, the NBA is so far fetched, like yeah. it's not really a thing. And so you have, if you don't believe it, nobody's going to. Yeah. And so it's funny how sometimes you get in the NBA and now there's the social media critics and there's this and there's that. And everybody, everybody has the answer to every single issue you have going on in your Everybody's life. Everybody's got something to say. Yeah. yeah. You're like, and, and, and then something. you're starting to doubt yourself, but it's funny cause it's like, you never doubted yourself to get here. So why would you start now when you're at the top of it, living your dream, you yeah. know? So I think that's, that's kind of the biggest thing for me is like, I'm more motivated by what, little Tyrese would think, you know, like I'm in, he's in, I'm in the NBA. You know what I mean? That's everything oh. I've ever dreamed of. So I, I just want to, you know, do the best I can for kids to see. And, That's awesome. And we know, you know, if, if you aren't motivated yourself and you're uh, a max guy, the NBA will motivate you in itself because guess what? You have to play 65 games. Yes. Can you give us a little get to an all NBA? Yeah. And that is a rule that was put in this year that like a lot of things with me and Tyrese doesn't affect me, but since we have Tyrese here, we're going to see how, how many games are you at? Do you know him? how many? I think I'm at 68. Oh, so you're Gooch. 68, yeah, I'm good so, now. So, um, yeah, what's your take on that rule? Because we've talked about it on the pod before. You've given your kind yeah, of we, like. We, we don't love it, and we'll reiterate why we don't love it, because yeah. the simple fact that, you know, guys are out there hobbling around on one leg, and, you know, there's money implications that go into this for the people out there that don't know that, so... That's not always cool, especially. Yeah, can you can you explain that though? Because like, so uh, you know, obviously Tyrese is in a situation where he signed a max contract, and you know, along with other guys, I think out there, you are sub 
have to make all NBA for some of these bonuses and triggers to kick in. And to make all NBA, you have to play at least 65 games. Well, little do people know that, you know, most max guys have to play, what is it, 34 to 36 minutes a night over an 82 game. Then injuries happen, sprained ankles, freak accidents you know, knock on wood. So to get out there and have to play through these knickknacks just to, you know, secure your own, yeah. you know, money is, you know, is tough. And then the simple fact that, you know, you still want to be helpful to your team. Yeah. So you're out there playing all these minutes while you're hurt and you're not helping your team when you could be sitting down, getting rested. And, but, but you, you feel play pressure. Under, yeah, but you play under 61 games. You can't take care of yourself. Um, but, you know, so talk about that impact and then we can move on to brighter pressures and fun <laughs> things. I mean obviously I hurt my hamstring this year um people are aware of that uh and then after it I came back I don't know if it was too early I don't know if it played we too don't need to go into we, details whatever about whatever that, happened yeah. but I spoke out of frustration to the media like the 65 game rule is just stupid we agree with you, <laughs> the boys agree with you. we agree right, yeah. we agree <laughs> But I, I play uh, in a men's league that has nine games plus playoffs, and so I can I I kind of get yeah. it's hard to play every week for so, sure for sure. Know. But I think that um, this is a new rule that's put into the league that's been put in by the league. Um, obviously, there's TV contracts coming up and all these things mm -hmm. that they're trying to do. And and I think at the same there's time, a lot of money coming the, in the NBA. <laughs> the whole point also with the NBA is we want the best players on the floor. So mm -hmm. it's a way to also incentivize players to play more games to make these awards to make so more money for it. themselves. You Correct. It. And uh, I met with Adam Silver in New York this year, uh, kind of after my comments, we just had a conversation yeah. and I just thought he was very well receptive to, you know, kind of my feedback on how I felt about it. It's something that the PA we've talked about uh, many times. It's something that I think the league and the PA will review after the year. And who knows if we're going to, I bet there will be some rule of some sorts. I don't know that it will be, you know, fully changed, you know, or, fully yeah. changed but um, you know, thankfully, thanks to our medical staff, I've been able to do that. And, you know, hopefully that that can happen for me. Um, but I do think that the, the part of, about this rule is this only impacts a certain amount of guys. You know yeah. what I mean? Like only, especially with, uh, and I know like Donovan didn't make the 65 game, yeah. but I'm saying like, when I talk about like the rookie max to the super max would be like me, Anthony, uh, Edwards and LaMelo and yeah. LaMelo, uh, wouldn't have made it because of injuries this year. So really only me and Ant. So that's like really a, a really specific amount of people. And I just so happen to, to be in that group. Yeah. But I would bet you that the majority of the league feels the way you feel. But again, yeah. the PA and the NBA are going to work together and they'll figure out an answer that It seems sense. like, first off, has Adam Silver ever called you in for a meeting? No, he hasn't. Yeah, not, to, not to make it about me, but it's not. But that rule stinks. Well, I, anyway, I, I <laughs> yeah, I, I could see. But I, I guess to that point, um, Again, as a fan of sports and the outside looking in, it seems like Adam Silver just has a good grasp of how to be a commissioner. Well, I think it's we're by far we're the best run league oh, in yeah. Absolutely. America by far. for sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know about the world, but I would like to think so. Yeah. Uh our, we have the best players association. <laughs> Uh, you know, Adam is great, and I think that it's something that will be reviewed and uh, re recon reconstructed the right way. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I made the sixty-five games, so I don't got nothing to complain yeah. about. It was hey. just in the moment. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. No, point? but it's cool. But it sounds like again, like the NBA is a fraternity. You're looking out not not just for yourself, but for other players that are going to be in that situation. For the young guys that are going to be coming in in a couple of years that are going to be in your situation, you want to make sure they get a fair shake at it too. Yeah. It sounds for sure. like secure, sure. secure the bag. Secure the bag. Well, now that we've you know talked about all that. Yeah, fun stuff. You know, we can actually get into some cool stuff. I know. Let's get Kyrie's, into some good stuff. You're big into fashion. You're also big into WWE and WrestleMania was in Philadelphia. Did you watch WrestleMania? I did. I mean, we had a game on okay. uh, WrestleMania Sunday, but yeah, yeah I've, I've rewatched the whole event. Did Triple H come out? Triple H came out on Saturday. Stephanie came out on Sunday. Ooh. Sheesh. I'm going to show you the wrestlers. You just give me the first word that comes to, to mind. This guy here. Uh, that's Brock Lesnar. That's Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. You know, okay. Uh, Was he before your time? He's kind no, of no, your no, time, no, right? No, no, yeah. No. Uh, Farmer. He wears cowboy hats and stuff now. Dude. He, yeah, yeah. And you know his daughter is like a Division One track Shop star? Shop yeah, yeah, yeah. Stud. Yeah, yeah. Duh. Yeah. She can, <laughs> if she's anything like him, she can throw that thing like four miles. <laughs> Holy smokes. Goat. 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 Is, is he your, is is he he your best really? of all time? He's the GOAT. He's uh, better than Kurt Angle in The Rock? Uh, Kurt Angle, like, in-ring ability is 
probably top to two. Break ankles. The Rock is his star power is amazing, but yeah. this is what I grew up on. So go. so he's your guy. That's like when you talk about Mount Rushmore, he's the first guy you're the putting on. The first guy, not even a thought. It's weird how he struggled in the WWE until he started rapping. Did you know that this is what happened? Do you I, know the story? I know that. Basically, he was like trying to find his way. He wasn't like a big star. He was like trying to find his way. And he was in the back of the bus one time, like going somewhere. And they were all just like bullshitting all the superstars. And he started like, this was right when like 8 Mile came out. And he started he like, like traffic. He's traffic, a mask guy too. He was in the back. Yeah. And then they were like, would you do that on TV? And he was like, yes. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> and then he blew and up. Then he blew like, up. Like, yeah. Yo, John, John Cena. He's a Massachusetts respect. guy. Oh, he's from West Newberry. Yeah. That's your My boy. Massachusetts brother. I didn't know, but now I know. <laughs> hey, twin, we lost. You can see him. Okay, next. Oh, what do you think about this guy? That's you a fan punk? or no? Uh, no? I do. I love punk. Um, uh, misunderstood. Okay, I'll take that it. That's a good word right there. Yeah, that's good. Uh, he seems polarizing. This is He's a little bit polarizing. after my after my time, but he seems polarizing when it comes to uh, just how people view him. Um, did try to do the UFC thing for a while. I don't think it was. It did not work. It's yeah, not as way successful. To be self aware and get back to where the money. Is <laughs> but he is. Uh, he is uh, another one of. One of the greats. You right? can't define the yeah. last twenty years of wrestling without mentioning his name. I love it. Okay, next guy here. Now this is a little bit more my era. Oh, oh hell yeah! Oh. Three sixteen. Um, <laughs> I think uh, undisputed. Let's go there. I just think Sheesh. in like the nineties, yeah. it's like he's the. Well, many people would say if you're taking in a star power, in-ring ability, a lot of those things into account, he's, he's I think, on everybody's top four. I don't think yeah. WWE gets to a tight without, without him, him. carrying yeah. the rock carrying through the 90s. And beer. And beer. Dude. And he has a beer that is so good. Yeah. He With El Segundo, I'm like giving free promo or whatever. Uh, El Segundo yes, stop, Brewing Company. Stop <gasps> doing that. <laughs> anyway, it's my favorite beer. Dude, you just, it's great. Now I have to hold this mic. Okay. Next um, picture. So this this is a little more my era. I'm I'm actually even a little bit before this. I like this, but anyway, okay. I like where you're at 316, there. Three sixteen. That's my boy Stone Cold. Steve now Austin. I'm gonna test you a little bit here on this next one. Do you know who this guy? Snake. Is? So you know uh, your history. On, okay. Uh, can't comment before my time. Okay. I'm a historian, but I know who he is. But you're not big. Okay. I'm not really watching those matches. That he's known man. for being Holding like a <laughs> snake. That's a cool man. It's crazy. Why? What's what's crazy about it's that? Jake bro? the Snake Roberts. Yeah. Rah. You know what he would do? He would nuts. He would put it on people like at the end of the match and like the Cobra or like whatever that is. Would like unknown. Yeah, I can't speak on that. Um, he was like a he's a psychologist. Okay, now this is one that I don't know if you know. Do you know this one? Big Boss Man, of course. Oh, dude, you know. I don't think you could show me a wrestler. I don't know the name. Really? Again, you're just not. You didn't watch a lot. Again, can't make many comments on this because I'm unaware of. Of his wrestling yeah. career, like not watching those. Matches Sorry, Kev was raised in the Stone Age, so this is like Dude, this I mean, is I like early nineties. This bro. is early nineties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyrese was um, like one. Do you know what I think would make uh, uh, the NBA a little bit a little bit better is if they gave you each a chance to cut a promo before your game that aired. Sometimes they do technically, right? They I mean, do. During, like halftime, you can cut your own promo. What and do you mean, game. Joel Embiid came out to? <laughs> I think it was DX. Yeah. <laughs> But imagine, can you do a, you can can't you do, do a, that, you get fine. So don't try and get me to do it on air. <laughs> he did a Joel Embiid impression last week. That was really good. He I won't make him I, do it. I, I love his, we're not doing that too. I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying it was very good. Um, <laughs> anyway, we're moving I'm on. coming for you, brother. We're, we're moving um, on to fashion <laughs> and. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're a fashion. You're one of, I'd say like you, who are some of the big, like Kuzma, right? Shea. Big fashion guys. James Harden. Um, Harden, yeah. And so I wanted to like, you know, our boy is, he's, he puts the fits together. He's Drip got some kits on. He's dripped up and dripped don't, out right now. Don't ever disrespect me. Yeah. Got the thighs showing, <laughs> which I respect. Um, I wouldn't have done it because it's a little cold and it's Cleveland, but that's that's our boy there. I was hoping you could just critique a couple of the fits Let's see here. Them. Let's see them. Let's see what we got first here. Oh, some little calm fit. Cool. Little some calm cool fit. Cool. Like tech. Yeah. I'm rolling. Hopping on the plane so you know he's busy. I, hey, um, hey, I you know like what this. I'm standing on. You know what I'm saying? Business. Yeah. I like this. I like I like uh an easy way to just get out is when you get a matching top to matching bottom. Bop. It was Easter too. It makes it easy. Oh, so you pasteled it out because of yeah. Easter. Well, Sheesh. okay, don't I mean I would 
Okay. <laughs> Don't, let's not do that. Like, uh, let's just keep it simple. I would have preferred that he just wore a basic color, but I am always with you Nike the mint? Tech. Okay. I'm I with like Nike Tech always. Yeah, uh, Nike Tech. No, what were the kicks you have? Are those New, new Bounce? Or not? They no, gotta be Nike. He's a Nike, Nike athlete. Guy. Okay. Nike athlete. Um, all right, cool. Here, so sorry. we like this. Flight out of Cleveland. Now here, now we got a little bit. Go ahead. What do you, I mean, this is a cardigan? I like the cardigan. The jeans are are not me. No, not, you don't not like me the flame sure. jeans? Huh? Flame jeans. Is that what the are brand? Flame? Like bell bottom type? Is there yeah. actually flames on them? Yeah. I can't really. <laughs> They're jinkos with I mean, the, the jeans aren't really me, but I I would have preferred like a basic blue jean. All right, cool. But yeah. I'm actually. Uh, don't geez, zoom in. Yeah. No, I like that. That's good. I'm yeah. actually. Uh, I like this outfit for George. Usually, yeah. I'm very. George knows I'm very critical of his outfits. Oh, and I'll yeah. call you him are. and tell him when oh, it's Oh, you'll terrible. hit him when they post and yeah, be like, yeah, yo, what is this? terrible. He'll FaceTime me. He'll be like, hey, that outfit that you wore? Trash. <laughs> yeah. I'll, or this is not. Like this. It stinks. <laughs> uh, I just would have preferred a basic blue jean, but I'm not mad yeah. at this outfit. I like it. Uh, now here is uh, this here. It's hard to see, but he's got kind of the mechanic vibe. It's like a. It's like a. Is that a Marnie shirt? Yeah, it is. Is that a pen? What are those pants? Are they leather? <laughs> oh, yo, are those cargo? Do I look a man of my caliber wearing leather? I can't pants? tell what those pants are. Do you know what material they are? No, they're denim for sure. They just got slits. Oh, there we go. Yeah, now we brighten it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Oh, so they have like the zippers. I would have. Um, no, no, no. Why is he carrying his shoes? Because well, I for, left them in the. In I would have, you know, yeah. me like I, I hate carrying things, so usually I'll, yeah. you know, put them. This was because that's part of your that's part of your outfit is what you're carrying, right? Like right now. Yeah. So if I this if Gatorade I have like shoes or something, I don't go in my outfit. Like when I go to India, I bring my shoes to the game at, at the arena. Yeah. I'll put. I'll give them the equipment manager when yeah. I get there. You know what the I equipment manager care. would say to me if I went to go give him? Beat it, buddy. Now you're let me ask you a question. Man. What is what is the transition like from hopping out of the car? How long do you have before you know cameras are rolling? Is there like a well, section home, in the you know because you tunnel? get out of the car? I get to the elevator. I go down, and as soon as I get out the elevator, there's a camera. So you got to be you know you got to be on point before so yeah, the elevator gotta, opens um, our elevate our elevator attendant miss yeah. louise amazing lady shout out to i louise. always miss have louise. her i'm like miss louise how am i looking today and she's like you gotta fix that you gotta fix that. quick ah. so she gets you right a little bit yeah she's usually my last she's really like my last checkup before yeah. i i hit Fresh the camera me. so shout out to miss louise but on the road uh it's usually as soon as i get off the bus so yeah so you gotta usually, be on point usually as i'm walking off the bus i'll say how i look yeah. So some people up there like, cool. I'm like, all right, bet. Say this. Now, do you ever get nervous like like going through one of these tunnels? Obviously, you do it 82 times, 40 times a game at home. You're never like, damn, like, do you ever put an outfit on that you're like, may think is a reach? You're like, damn, is this no, a reach? I, wear, I mean, like, I'm no, very, the stuff that he wears, you got to be confident to wear. Yeah, 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 I wear stuff a lot that is you know, could be a reach, reach yeah. depending on who you're talking to. But, and you just... But it's like, I, if you wear it confidently, how can anybody say yeah. anything? So, like yeah. someone could be like, oh, you know, you look like such a, you look like a cab driver. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, this is, confidence I'm, is part He's of like, I'm going like for cab fashion. driver. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right, next, next one. All right, Come next on, one. Man. Now, this is your teammate. I think this is kind of drippy. Now. You're not with it? Uh, Everybody's been wearing that brand. I don't know what it's brand. Denim, it. denim Tears. Denim, denim Tears? Oh, yeah, that is. I'm not jacking the Denim Tears. Why? Like, I just haven't worn it before. It's not your thing. It's not yeah. my thing. Not for me. Obi, but, yeah. we got mad love for you, but this one, I, I like it. Tyrese doesn't like it. I think it. that it's something that George would wear for Easter. <laughs> At the Easter like, dinner? The pastel colors just really, yeah, that's the vibe. Go. Uh, I was trying. I think it's cool. I got. Do you guys break balls like when you yeah, pulls yeah, yeah. the locker room, you're like, yo, what yeah, is yeah. that? Yeah, for sure. It's usually everybody talking to me breaking your walls that yeah. not everybody would wear it used to be buddy all the time yeah. like buddy would wait until i got there and he, he'd pull his phone out no matter what i was like, wearing yeah. And be like, yeah like it's you trash. just doing all that huh buddy yeah. was doing yeah, all that like, yeah. yeah 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 he's just doing it every time like come on like, yeah yeah, yeah he do it every time on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough, buddy it depends usually guys you know look you look nice fit or not yeah all right what we got now this next one here <laughs> <laughs> What do you think about this one, George? <laughs> Would you rock this? It looks like Ace Ventura a little bit. Honestly, uh, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Bruno? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what I honestly think you're going for here. The and Tims are all right, though. You don't think the Tims th are good? This is horrible. I, I think, think you could rock it, dude. This is stupid. <laughs> that body is not happening for George. Oh, Zepic is a real thing, so. 
Ozempic is a real yeah. thing. Come okay, on. so I think we we know where you can improve. If you had to give like one piece of advice to our boy moving forward for the last three games of the season, as far as fashion goes, what are, what what is a quick fix he could he could? Can I borrow one of those like cab hats that you? I have? don't think that would really work your style. What about Doc Martens? I think everybody should own a pair of Doc Martens. Yeah. Respect. Everybody in the world hey, should. Have, Doc yeah. Martin, you know, I mean, swing. Sign your boy, yeah. Tyrese. And Let's get a just, collab. Just send me yeah. one pair of shoes that I can wear. Not the combat boots, because that's really not my vibe. More of a low cut. Yeah, the low cut socks. loafers. Yeah. yeah. Doc on. Martens make Tough. those? Makes those? Yeah, that's what they're I known for. I thought they were loafers. only yeah, like listen, the big. We know that you big. wear skinny jeans still, and that's not part of the fashion crew. We'll help you out. <laughs> I got First you. off, do you see these calves? I have to rock them, the tight ones, bro. I'm a little ashy, oh, so I apologize God. for that. Um, okay, I think we got the 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 advice we needed. Um, thank you for coming on the pod. Good luck to both of you guys for the, I mean, yeah. a lot can happen in these next couple of days. Wolf, it can. Wolf. You guys could very well see each other in a week. See each so. other in a week. Um, so thank you for for hopping on. Um, we appreciate it. Yeah, yeah appreciate it was good. This has been the Bench Seat Podcast, and follow along for part. What's next week? Eight. Yeah, episode, episode eight. eight. Thank you guys for joining us, Tyrese. Thanks for coming on. Oh, this I is have the Bench Seat Podcast. I have to do one quick shout out. That's fine. We can end there. Uh, this here is Viviana Strong. Uh, a friend of mine's uh, niece is two years old. Uh, unfortunately, got diagnosed with leukemia a couple weeks ago. So all of the links, if you want to donate, all the links are going to be in our bios uh, on a link to the episode as well. Um, she's a warrior as a parent and as a cancer survivor. Um, definitely just felt struck by this. So I'm trying to support here. So Viviana, keep doing your thing. Yep, absolutely. Viviana, stay strong.